हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू मेरीन इंजीनियरिंग ट्यूटोरियल्स आई एम अतुल कुमार गुप्ता एंड बैक विद ए न्यू ट्यूटोरियल टुडे वी हैव ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ लेक्चर एंड द टॉपिक इज बॉयलर वाटर ट्रीटमेंट इन द लास्ट ट्यूटोरियल वी डिस्कस्ड about the harmful effects of impurities which can result in boiler failure in this lecture we will discuss the objectives of boiler water treatment and the procedure employed for treatment of the boiler water by use of chemicals objectives of boiler water treatment treatment of boiler water is most essential job in the care of boiler for ensuring a safe efficient and reliable service from the boilers as most of the boiler troubles are associated with incorrect water treatment following are the main objectives of boiler water treatment number 1 is prevention of scale formation prevention of scale formation in boiler and feed system by using distilled water or precipitating all scale forming salts into non adherent sludge second is prevention of corrosion prevention of corrosion in boiler and feed system by maintaining the boiler water in an alkaline condition free from dissolved gases third is preventing entry of foreign matter control of sludge formation and prevention of carry over with the steam and lastly control of sludge formation prevention of entry of any foreign matter such as oil waste mill scale iron oxide copper particles sand well spatter etc into the boiler coming to prevention of scale formation first of all scale forming salts calcium sulfate calcium carbonate and magnesium sulfate are mainly responsible for scale formation in boilers second is the chemicals used in earlier days lime and soda treatment were prevalent which have been replaced by phosphate and caustic treatment in modern boilers use of phosphate instead of sodium carbonate reduces the amount of caustic soda to be used third is the chemicals trisodium phosphate used helps in precipitating scale forming salts into sludge and it also provides alkalinity any shortfall of alkalinity is made up by use of caustic soda phosphate reacts with the scale forming salts in the following manner sodium sulfate formed in the reaction is highly soluble in water whereas calcium phosphate is precipitated which can be removed by blow down sodium carbonate formed in the reaction provides alkalinity to the boiler water as it is hydrolyzed 
to form weak acid that is carbonic acid and strong base which is sodium hydroxide which we can see in this reaction below. Magnesium phosphate formed in the reaction is precipitated which can be removed by glow down. Prevention of corrosion. Causes of corrosion in boilers. Magnesium chloride, calcium bicarbonate, dissolved oxygen and use of vegetable or animal oil for lubrication are responsible for corrosion in boilers. Magnesium chloride is hydrolyzed to form hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid starts corrosion of steel in the boiler. Hydrochloric acid is regenerated by further reaction and starts corrosive cycle. HCl is neutralized by maintaining reserve alkalinity in boiler water by calcium carbonate, reserve phosphate and caustic soda. On heating, calcium bicarbonate is decomposed into calcium carbonate, carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide and water recombine to form carbonic acid which causes acidity in water. Carbon dioxide is eliminated by addition of amines in boiler water. Dissolved oxygen in boiler water is removed by mechanical and chemical deaeration. Deaerator is used in large steam plants on steamships only. Dissolved oxygen is eliminated from water tube boilers on motor ships by using hydrazine as shown in this chemical reaction. Use of vegetable or animal oils for lubrication in respirating steam machinery when returned in the boiler water form fatty acids thus causing corrosion. Use of respirating steam machinery is restricted to mooring winch and windlass or stripping pump on conventional oil tankers. Use of pure mineral oil and efficient filtration can avoid the corrosion by lubricating oils. Preventing entry of foreign matter. Harmful foreign matter. Entry of seawater and oil can cause very serious troubles in the boiler. In addition to these, rust or mud from improperly maintained feed tanks and pipes can also enter and affect the heat transfer. Preventing entry of seawater. Seawater is used on ships for production of distal water by evaporation and for condensation of steam to recycle it. Traces of salts in distilled water can be easily treated in the boiler but entry of seawater through leaking condensers tubes should be completely avoided. A salinometer sensor is equipped in the feed pump suction which can alert the ship personnel at very early stage when condenser tube leaks. It can be well monitored by daily testing of the boiler water. Third is the preventing entry of oil.
Steam is mainly used on motor ships for heating of fuel, lubricating, cargo oil or sludge. Leakage of heating coils or tubes can result in entry of oil into the boiler through returning condensate. Arrangement of casket tank is such that if oil comes with the returning condensate, it is easily detected from the observation tank and cannot easily pass to the boiler unless operators completely neglect it. Modern ships are equipped with an alarm if oil is detected in observation tank. And lastly, preventing entry of rust or mud. Feed water tank should be inspected annually to see the condition of tank coating and any accumulation of mud is removed. Feed water is chemically treated to prevent corrosion of feed pipes. Casket tank is equipped with a towel filter which can trap any foreign particle and also absorb emulsion of lubricating oil coming back from respiring steam engines. Control of sludge formation. Constituents of sludge. Salt suspended in water or precipitated by chemical reaction can form sludge in the boiler. Similarly, if oil gets entry into boiler, also forms sludge on heat transfer surface. Deposition of sludge on heat transfer surface reduces the heat transfer greatly, resulting in rupture of tubes due to overheating. Second is control of suspended salts. Salts such as sodium chloride, magnesium chloride and magnesium sulphate are highly soluble in water but their concentration in boiler water should be kept within limits by partial blowdown at regular intervals to prevent their carryover of sludge formation. Sodium carbonate and sodium sulphate formed in the chemical reactions contribute to alkalinity in boiler water. Next is control of precipitated salts. Calcium carbonate, magnesium hydroxide and calcium sulphate are not soluble in boiler water and tend to deposit scale. Calcium and magnesium phosphates produced by chemical reactions are precipitated. All these salts must be removed from the boiler by periodic blowdown to prevent their accumulation and subsequent deposition. And lastly, removal of oil. If oil gains entry into the boiler, liquid coagulant should be dosed immediately to prevent spread of oil on heat transfer surface and coagulated oil should be removed from scum blowdown valve until oil is completely removed. Coagulants keep the oil and precipitates in colloidal suspension until they are blown down. When boiler drum is opened for inspection or survey, thorough cleaning should be carried out with high pressure jet using distilled water to remove any foreign matter adhering to the boiler surface. Chemicals recommended by British Standard 1170 of 1983. This table describes about the treatment of water for marine boilers as per recommendation of European standard BS 1170 of 1983. So we will see the purpose for which the 
treatment is carried out, the types of chemicals and for the type of boiler. First is to prevent scale formation. We use sodium phosphate for all boilers up to 84 bar. To give alkalinity and minimize corrosion, we use sodium hydroxide for all boilers up to 84 bar and use sodium carbonate for boilers up to 60 bar. To condition sludge, polyelectrolytes, starch and tannins are used for boiler up to 84 bar and sodium aluminate for boiler up to 60 bar. To remove traces of oxygen, sodium sulphide is used for boiler up to 42 bar and hydrazine for boiler from 31.5 to 84 bar. But mostly on motor ships where we have low pressure boilers, also we used hydrazine. To prevent the risk of caustic cracking, sodium sulphate, so we can use it for all boilers up to 31.5 bar. To reduce the risk of carryover or foaming, anti foams are used for all boilers up to 42 bar. And to protect feed and condensate system from corrosion, we can use filming amines for all boilers up to 60 bar and neutralizing amines for boiler between 31.5 to 84 bar. This completes the study of boiler water treatment. This book is written by me and covers all the topics as per Indian Maritime University syllabus. It is also recommended by Indian Maritime University as a reference book. It clarifies the concepts with simple illustrations. This book also provides answers to all the questions which have appeared in the examination conducted by Indian Maritime University. This book can help the students in preparing for the exam and also to work on ship's boilers safely. Hope you have liked the lecture. You can write your feedback in the comment box. If you have liked the tutorial, you may share it with your friends. You may subscribe to the channel for getting notification about the new tutorials. I will be back with a new lecture shortly. Thanks for watching till the end.